Welcome back to this video series. We are discussing C++ programming language. In this video, we will discuss memory allocation to objects and this pointer. So when you create an object of this class n complex C1, right? In this call, we are invoking the constructor, parameterized constructor, right? As I told you in the last video, C++ gives us one default constructor, which will initialize your data members to garbage. In earlier video, we had written one default constructor of our own without any parameters, which was initializing the data members to zero. But we have removed that for now. And we have just maintained one constructor with two integer parameters, which will be used to initialize our data members, right? So when I'm creating object C1 using this parameterized constructor, what happens is that this three and two will be assigned to and real and an imaginary and we can so display it using calling the display function now in c++ every member function barring static member functions which we are going to learn later in this video in c++ every member function except static member function receive a hidden implicit parameter that is called as this pointer so all these member functions constructors and member functions except static receive this this pointer for this class n complex it will be of type n complex right a pointer to n complex const this so it is a constant pointer what do you understand a constant pointer is that this pointer when it's assigned address of some object that's it you cannot reassign it to some other object right so it's a pointer to class n complex that means it will store the address of object of n complex type in this case the object which is invoking this member functions address of that object will be stored in this so in this case when we are creating this object c1 right c1 is invoking this n complex parameterized constructor c1 right so c1's address will be assigned to this this is hidden. This is implicit. You don't have to mention it anywhere. It is passed to every member function implicitly. So I can write this code in a, another manner. That is this arrow n real equal to R or this arrow n imaginary equal to I. Because implicitly I'm getting this pointer, which is storing the address of the current object, the object which is invoking these functions. Let's say in second line, C1 dot display, right? So C1 is invoking the display function, display member function. So that this pointer will store the address of C1 and instead of n real, I can say C out this arrow n real, right? Even if I say just n real, that is fine. That is okay. That is going to work. But implicitly it is happening like this arrow in real right both syntax are okay you can use this and this and here instead of n imaginary it will be something like this arrow n imaginary why do we use arrow you remember the structure right in when you create a structure in c you can access the individual members of the structure using dot operator like you create a a variable of type structure and then they say c dot some member but when you create a pointer to structure you can access using arrow operator similar syntax terminology is followed here right you should know this concept basically what happens behind the scene how does your member function know that which n real he has to print how does your constructor know which n real of which object it has to initialize so implicitly we are giving the address of the object which is invoking this member functions or this constructor. So object is C1. Its address is in this pointer. The, this pointer is implicitly passed to this member functions. So the actual code is something like this, right? We can also use it like this because it's implicit. It's a given. We can ignore that. We can assume that this pointer is there and we can straightforward say something like this, right? This will, this will work, no problem. But behind the scene, it is actually this arrow in real. Once we have seen this, let us also see how memory is allocated to objects of a class, right? So when you create this object C1 of n complex class, right? 
the data members need to be stored in the memory somewhere also the member functions of the class will reside in memory somewhere right so how it is done is that let's say i create few more objects let's say n complex c2 5 comma minus 3 and let's say n complex c3 let's say 7 comma 4 right so i'm creating three objects right now how will the memory allocation happen for all of these objects is that when your program is under execution a structure like this follows this is called as code segment this is called as data segment in the data segment you have stack heap and data section data segment is used to store variables right and code segment is used to store your lines of code the actual lines of code which are executed right now you have a n complex class n complex class has two data members two instance variables n real and n imaginary and it has currently two member functions that is display and n complex parameterized constructor so the functions the member functions of class will always be stored in the code segment and they are stored once that means there's only one copy of member functions in code segment right because it's the same right these don't change for every object they are same the code is same for all the objects so there's only one copy of member functions in code segment for every individual object what is different member functions are same for all the objects so what is different difference is their data members a copy of data members is created for each object a separate copy of data members is created for each object except static member static data members which we are going to study next right so for data members now usually when you are creating objects like this the objects are created on stack so these data members will be allocated memory locations on stack let's say n real and n imaginary so 3 and 2 for c1 uh, 5 minus 3 for c2 and 7 4 or for c3 the size of the object usually is calculated as size of its data members so if integer occupies 4 bytes right size of c1 will be 8 bytes size of c2 will be again 8 bytes and c3 will be 8 bytes so the size of object depends on this data members not on its member functions because member functions have only one copy for all the objects of the class right easy enough how objects are stored in memory now like any other data type you can create objects using dynamic memory allocation right so let's do that let's create objects using dynamic memory allocation so in that case the syntax is little bit different n complex class name so when you do dynamic memory allocation you need a pointer so i'll create a pointer let's say c1 equal to new n complex 3 comma 4 so this is how i create my object on heap using dynamic memory allocation so you create a pointer c1 and you say keyword new which is a keyword used to do dynamic memory allocation in c++ as we saw in the preview in the video for dynamic memory allocation and then you say class name followed by this is signifying that we are trying to call the parameterized constructor right so how will this object created in the memory as i told you the memory size of object is determined by its data members so the, here we have two integers so this will require 8 bytes so 8 bytes of memory will be reserved from heap right the starting address of which let's assume 1000 will be given to this c1 right this memory will be assigned in from heap starting address will be stored in c1 now this c1 which is the pointer itself is a variable but that will reside on stack so this is our c1 and it will store the starting address that is 1000 now once you have that c1 it's a pointer so you can invoke the member function using c1 arrow display right? you can call the member function using c1 arrow 
display right so this is how you create the object on heap if you need to create the object on heap you will create like this now the object itself is in heap but the pointer c1 will reside on stack storing the starting address of the object and real and an imaginary data members right can you can you pictureize this earlier when we were when we were creating objects like this n complex c2 4 comma 5 right so they were cre getting created on stack like this right 4 comma 5 the total object was getting created on stack but now we are creating the object on heap using new keyword and storing the base address in this pointer variable c1 which is on stack in order to free the memory right allocated memory you will just say delete c1 right this will deallocate this memory from heap this memory will be deallocated you have to use delete c1 as we have learned in dynamic memory allocation video so once you create once you use this new keyword n complex 3 comma 4 the first thing that happens is a memory space required to create the object will be reserved on heap we require 8 bytes right so 8 bytes will be reserved the starting address of this memory space let's say 1000 will be assigned to c1 so that c1 will be created on stack it's a pointer variable right so that will be created on stack and it will store the value 1000 of this starting address on heap then the parameterized constructor of n complex because we have created we have mentioned this bracket and parameters so parameterized constructor of this n complex class will be invoked and n real and n imaginary will be initialized with value 3 and 4 so 3 and 4 will be stored in the they will be initialized now when you call the delete c1 operation what happens here is that a special member function of this complex class n complex class which is called as destructor is called right a destructor is invoked destructor does exact uh, inverse job as that of your constructor destructor is used to deinitialize the data members right and like constructors if you do not write destructor by yourself c++ will give you a default destructor right so once you call this delete statement a default destructor we will study destructors in details in the upcoming videos but for now there will be a default destructor so when you call delete first that default destructor will be called right and the memory for c1 will be released this memory that we allocated on heap will be deallocated right new keyword in c++ calls constructor and delete keyword will invoke destructor that is the thing which i want you to remember new keyword while creating objects will call constructor here in this case we have specified bracket and parameters so it will call parameterized constructor if you just said n complex that's it so in this case this will have called the default constructor remember c++ gives us default constructor so it will call the default constructor which will data members initialize it with garbage values similarly delete will always first call the destructor what is destructor it's a special member function which is used to deinitialize the data members we'll study that in the upcoming video but remember that delete will call the destructor and after that it will deallocate the memory that was allocated dynamically by new so this is the sequence how it happens